Welcome to Unit 13, Video 2, Mass to Mass. By the end of this video, you should understand why it is necessary to perform mass to mass conversions, and you should be able to for perform calculations including involving mass of a reactant or product given a mass of a different reactant or product. So far, we've been looking at using a balanced equation to determine the mole ratio of reactants and products in a reaction and convert from moles of one reactant or product to moles of another. However, as you know, in lab we can't measure moles directly. Therefore, if we're going to do calculations to help us determine how much reactant or product we need or will form in lab, we need to do them in mass. So we can use the molar masses and mole conversions like you used at the start of the year to determine how much of a reactant or how much of a product we need or will form based on the mole ratio from the balanced Let's start with a schematic representation of the process we're going to follow. In all of the problems we're going to be looking at, we're going to be given the mass of either a reactant or a product and asked to find the mass of a different reactant or product. As you should know, we can't go directly from mass of reactants or products to mass of a different reactant or product, since the ratios in our balanced equation are not mass ratios, they're mole ratios. So in order to get from mass of one reactant or product to another reactant or product, we have to go through moles. We first will convert the mass of what we're given into moles, use our mole ratio from the balanced equation as we did in the last video to convert to moles of what we want, and finally convert moles of what we want back to mass. Take this problem for example. Here we're asked how many grams of Na2SO4 will be formed when 20.2 grams of NaOH react completely with H2SO4. Here we're being given that we have 20.2 grams of NaOH and plenty of H2SO4. So the H2SO4 won't actually affect our calculations. And we're being asked how many grams of sodium sulfate we can form with that much sodium hydroxide. In order to figure out how much product we can make from a given amount of reactant, we first have to know what our mole ratio is between our reactants and products. Therefore, Step one will be to write a balanced equation. Here's our skeleton equation. Balancing, we find that two moles of NaOH plus one mole of H2SO4 yields two moles of water and one mole of sodium sulfate. From here, in order to use the mole ratio, we have to convert what we're given from grams into moles. Using mole conversions, which we learned previously, we know that we can multiply what we're given, 20.2 grams, by a conversion factor of one mole of NaOH over the molar mass of NaOH, which is about 40. Alternatively, you can simply divide 20.2 by the molar mass. Canceling our units, we find that we have 0 0.505 moles of sodium hydroxide. Now that we know how many moles of reactant we have, we can use our balanced equation to determine how many moles of product we'll be able to form. First, let's isolate our mole ratio. We want the mass of Na2SO4. We have the mass of NaOH. Therefore, our relevant mole ratio is 1 to 2. For every 1 mole of Na2SO4 we want to form, we need 2 moles of NaOH. Again, our mole ratio is 1 mole of Na2SO4 for every 2 moles of NaOH. And our other side of our equation is going to read x moles of Na2SO4 is equal to 0 0.505 moles of NaOH. In other words, if 2 moles of NaOH will give us 1 mole of Na2SO4, how many moles of Na2SO4 will 0 0.505 moles of NaOH give us? Solving for x, we find that this many moles should give us 0.253 moles of Na2SO4. This should make sense, since you should get half as much Na2SO4 as you have NaOH. Finally, 
Since the question wants mass of Na2SO4, we need to convert our moles of Na2SO4 back to grams. Again, using a conversion factor, this time with the molar mass on top, we can cancel our units and we find that we can yield 35.9 grams of Na2SO4. Notice that even though our mole ratio is 2 to 1, our mass ratio is very different. This drives home the point that it's important to use the mole ratio in order to answer these questions. Here's some problems to try on your own. Pause the video here and answer the questions below. Notice that you have to balance the equation before you proceed, so be sure to do that first. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. So in review, we started with a mass of one quantity, either a reactant or a product, converted it to moles, used the mole ratio from the balanced equation to figure out how many moles of what we want we can get from the moles we were given, and finally converted those moles back to mass. Hence, it's a mass-to-mass -mass problem. An easy way to remember this sequence is that we went from mass to moles to moles to mass. Mass of what we're given to moles of what we're given to moles of what we want to mass of what we want. Mass to moles to moles to mass. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we, we looked at why it's necessary to perform mass-mass conversions. Recall that we can't measure moles directly in labs, so since we have to work in mass, we need to be able to convert between mass to moles to moles to mass. And finally, we learned how to perform calculations involving mass of a reactant or a product given the mass of a different reactant or product. Again, going from mass to moles to moles to mass. Mass of what we have, moles of what we have, moles of what we want, mass of what we want.